Greetings, and welcome to episode 34. In today's episode, we'll be talking about fear and how it can permeate and affect your every action, thought process, and even your health. So if you're ready, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, fear. Most people think, or what I was going to say, the majority of people think that the opposite of love is hatred, but it isn't. The opposite of love is fear. Fear can manifest in many different forms. Hatred is only one of them. And I'm still not entirely sure where hatred is, is a version of fear or even anger. Because I'm not afraid. It could be that the fear that a person isn't respecting your boundaries or your wishes. Or the fear that somebody has the audacity. And then that still plays in with the lack of respect. So it would be that anger is a fear that you're not being respected as a person, individual, or whatever it is in that situation. Now, hatred, I could only, and this is me speaking from my own personal experiences, true hatred has to be a fear that this person will not be punished for their actions. It has to be. Based on that fear. Because I can say from my own personal experiences, when I had the occasion to harbor that much negative emotion about somebody, it was due to the fear that they would never be punished, that they would never be able or be put in a position to see it from my point of view, to see the damage, the sheer amount of damage they had done to my life for their own selfish reasons. They gained nothing from it and as it concerns me, lost everything. Lost my respect, lost my friendship, lost everything. <coughs> I'm not going to get into the reasons, just I want you to know that it, it can destroy, fear can destroy. It destroyed our relationship, and it wasn't just my side of the fear that destroyed the relationship. It wasn't just my fear of them never getting punished or never seeing it from my point of view. That wasn't, that, that's what destroyed it for me, or for them. What destroyed it for me was their actions. Their fear that they weren't going to get what they want, or that they weren't getting what they thought they wanted at the time led them to perform the actions that led to my negative negativity in the first place so it still comes down to fear I'm not gonna get what I want you're gonna you're not gonna do what I want you to do I'm gonna be alone or what what have you it was something along those lines but it caused me to harbor such a hatred and that hatred for a very long time sustained me. It kept me going because it was either hatred or despair. Those were the two choices. And I was a construction worker at the time and I was absolutely 100% useless because all I could think about was my situation and I couldn't function. I couldn't do my job. I was worthless that's all I, the only way I can describe it I couldn't do anything I could I could function but not nearly where at the level I needed to function to do my job to participate in society and 
And so, yeah, I had to turn it into hatred just so I could function because for some reason hatred is, is, an, is a different type of energy so you can use it. It doesn't, it doesn't make everything feel weaker. It makes everything feel stronger. So I used that and it got me through it. But eventually that all that negativity that what could be considered one of the most profound forms of fear eventually ate away at the core of my being, literally. And I ended up having a heart attack. Because it was negativity on top of negativity and I would hold that in because I was already harboring such negativity. It was like a magnet. And I had a heart attack. And to this day, people laugh, but the only reason I think, the only reason I lived through that heart attack was because what caused it in the first place was I'm harboring all this hatred. And this person that had caused the hatred in the first place was just stacking on just more and more difficulty and more and more difficulty. And I, be, I was already just furious. And then something happened at work. And I became enraged. I became so angry that my heart stopped beating. And I felt it. And I was, at first I didn't know what was going on, but then I realized, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. And most people at that point would become scared and panic. And that very panic is what kills you. That says, oh my God, I'm dying. I, in my opinion, that's what kills you. But I didn't become scared. I became even more enraged at the thought of dying at work sitting by myself in my car I became so enraged I felt my heart go <gasps> and start beating again <laughs> and from that day forward I did everything in my power to remove every layer of that negativity down to the core of my being and replace it with something positive something positive but there was so much negativity in my life at that time that's what it that was the final outcome and if hatred and anger if these things truly are just different mechanics of fear then it was fear that led me to that point the fear that I'm not gonna make it through this or I can't make it through this and so now I'm angry why, why me? That fear that the universe is picking on you. We've all been there. Just because it doesn't feel that sharp twinge like fear, it's still fear. It's not mortal terror. It's not worry. It's, it's like fear without the worry. Because that tinge that you feel when you're afraid, that's worry. That's the only difference between hatred, anger, and any other negativity you could possibly feel is that twinge of worry. When you're angry, you're not worried. You're angry. When you're hateful, you're not worried. You're hateful. But when you're not in a negative space and you have occasion to feel fear, what you're feeling is exaggerated worry. And that's exactly what hatred and anger come from exaggerated worry only it's a different type of worry you're not afraid it's going to happen you're angry because it is happening that's the only difference anger and hatred come from what is happening fear comes from what you don't know might happen it's the unknown That's why fear gives way to anger, because all it do, all you need to do to become to to have anger and hatred instead of fear is to remove worry. Once you remove worry, this negative energy becomes anger and hatred and every other possible mechanic thereof. 
But that is my example of how fear can actually deteriorate the body. I mean, you're holding that right in your energetic center. That's where you hold your emotions. Well, that's where the majority of people hold their emotions. I can't speak for everybody. And I can feel, you can feel emotion anywhere. You can feel it in your hand if you want. That's not the point. The point is wherever you're holding that emotion, that area is going to start to deteriorate on a physical level. It's like salt can deteriorate anything given, given, given enough time, salt can deteriorate anything except for water. It can eat through rock, it can eat through wood, it can eat through metal, leather, paper, you name it. Given enough time. And that's what fear is. That's what fear does. That's what negative energy does. And fear is it's the epitome of there. It's the epitome of negative energy. Mm. I should have done this, this episode right after I did the love episode. But whatever. <laughs> mm, excuse me, getting a little dry in the mouth there. Oh, but yeah, it's, I cannot, what's the word I'm looking for? I cannot express to you the importance of not filing, not falling into a spiral of fear. That is to say, the actual mechanic of worry. Was it? Alan Watts that said it, or Terence McKenna, I can't remember. It was some, some advanced speaker that's passed on to the next realm that says, worry is the presumption that you know better than the universe that with the outcome. The universe hasn't yet decided the outcome and won't decide the outcome until it happens. But you're, you presume to know more than the universe by worrying about what's going to come. It's the opposite of, of a kid at Christmas. A kid at Christmas is full of wonder and, Oh, I bet I'm going to get this. I bet I'm going to get this. And you are doing the exact same thing with the exact same intensity, but in the other direction. And just for the record, I used to hate Christmas morning absolutely hated it because you would get I would literally make myself sick with anticipation and I grew to actually hate Christmas Eve because <laughs> I knew I'd spend the whole rest of the night until I started opening presents with an upset stomach and feeling queasy like I was gonna vomit <laughs> oh mm. And from what I have learned over the years is that fear is primarily a left brain function. Because logically, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but logic would also dictate that you live in a universe of infinite possibility so stop worrying because you don't know the outcome and you're more likely to draw down to yourself the negative outcome just by worrying about it because you're accidentally telling the universe this is what I want this is what I want and and that's not what you're telling the universe but the universe can only pick out broken leg broken leg it doesn't actually hear the part where you're saying I don't want a broken leg. <laughs> All it picks up on is broken leg. Oh, broken leg! And there you go. Oh, god damn it, broken leg. <laughs> so be very mindful of how you use the law of attraction. <laughs> you might accidentally attract something you didn't want through fear. Like, I think that's why you have all this new world order and all that stuff going around nowadays. They let it out on purpose because regardless of if it's a new world order or Illuminati, if you believe and you're afraid that nothing can be done 
Nothing can be done. It's going to happen. Nothing can be done. Then the universe is going to say, okay, poof. And they know that. And they're getting you to draw it into being for them. And I say, fuck that, dude. I see a different future for mankind. <laughs> and I see it with the intensity of 7 billion people. Why? Because deep down, 7 billion people, minus the elites that are trying to control everything, want something different than what they want. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know what they really want, and I'm using what people really want I'm using that to trump what they don't really want. It's one of those OCD things that if, if I twitch my thumb three times, fish won't fall from the sky. Well, if I stay active in actively projecting a positive future for the, for the, for the world, then that's what's going to happen. Fish won't fall from the sky. There won't be any of this one world nonsense. GMOs won't kill us all with the poison foods and all that good stuff. <laughs> They want you to think that there's no way out. Yeah, yeah, there is. There's always options. Up to and including death. People don't want to think about that, but it's the truth. Well, I'm afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. That's not a fear you'll find in me. Because you're not going to trick me into using my fear to advance your agenda, no matter what it is. If a guy comes up, I'm going to beat your ass. He's counting on you being afraid that he's going to beat your ass because that's going to add an advantage to him beating your ass. Fact. If you notice that a man that stands up to the bully, that bully backs down because he loses the advantage of fear. I've noticed that just truck driving. These guys are all big and uh, run in their mouth. And as soon as I stand up and say, well, what are you going to do? They back down because they're so used to having that advantage of size, having that immediate fear response. And when they don't get it, they don't know what to do. Fear is that. Dune. Fear is the tiny mind killer. And it is. Very little tiny mind killer. It's the negative ego. A, which is the ego is also a left brain construct and I'm not trying to just bash the left brain sorry you don't, don't go running away on me <laughs> he runs off to her no, <laughs> no just hang in there <laughs> fear is, an, is the negative ego it's, the, it's a, a left brain construct it's going to run off with you just like any I mean, to you, it could seem like there's only one logical outcome, and that's a broken life. But you forget that the right brain is screaming. You live in a universe of infinite possibilities. Shut the hell up. Stop picking the wrong possibility. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're picking the wrong possibility. You're going up. You're going into this room, and this big, giant guy is going to say, I'm going to beat your ass, and you instantly pick that possibility. Poof, he's going to beat my ass, and he's probably going to get it done. And the left brain's all, <laughs> and the right brain's all, mm. I am a person of infinite possibilities, and you better prove that you can make that possibility happen, Chief, and you better be able to back it up. <laughs> infinite possibility. Infinite. And for some reason, your negative ego picks that one. We're going to die! <laughs> Infinite possibilities. We could all sprout wings and fly the fuck away. But no! We're going to die! You know what? I would much rather see wings and fly away. Come on. <laughs> Wish with me. <laughs> Now, along with the infinite possibilities, there is a select number of things that will happen. There's a select number of things that might happen. And there's a select number of things that aren't bloody likely. Just based on our 
world set up and view. And I do believe, honestly, the reason why miracles don't happen more often is because we have it in our left brain, which is dominant in our society, that these things will never happen. So when they do happen, it's, oh, it's a miracle. And it's a once in a lifetime thing and it will never happen again. And so that's what we've told our planet. And that's what the planet projects to the universe. And the universe says, okay, never happens. Only every once in a while. You need wings to fly away. But that guy's screaming, you're going to die. And everyone else agrees with him. So you're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we could get everyone screaming wings. Wow. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> You're not going to lie, are you? Anyway. So, what if you discovered right now that fear is a left brain construct? The immediate construct would be your negative ego. And that you could put it away just like you could put away any other aspect of the left brain, such as logic, reason, or the ego. Because you can think logically without thinking for the worst. Because logic dictates there's a way out of any situation, up to and including death. But we try not to think that drastically. But in the same breath, everyone's like, oh, death's just a transition. You can't kill or you can't destroy or create energy. It just turns into something else. But I don't want to die to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> if that is the only way out, jump to your immediate death or burn alive in this burning building brother I'm jumping I'm jumping up to and including death I'm jumping but you could live through the fire you could live from the fall I'd rather find out now than in 15 minutes <laughs> it could, that is granted if there's no other way out I'm not going to let my tiny left brain negative ego dictate what's going to come next. Well, what's wrong with the ego? Well, the ego is that part of the brain that whether or not you have the skills will tell that big guy that says he's going to beat your ass, will tell that big guy, well, which, you go ahead and try it. <laughs> that's what's wrong with the ego <laughs> it sometimes speaks before you have a chance to say you know if I go over here will you still beat me up <laughs> and granted that's probably still a fear response but you won't have a broke jaw and you won't lose any teeth <laughs> that's only if you don't have the skill if you have the skill perhaps you're trying to avoid the fight because you know you'll win and see that's different that's still not letting the ego jump up and control the situation. You wouldn't want the ego jumping up in a fear response any more than you want the ego jumping up in a uh, false bravado. Oh yeah? What are you going to do about it? Oh! Oh! <laughs> but something I've noticed over the years in my 40 years on this planet, my long walk, if you can fight off the tiny mind, the left brain negative aspect, that is fear, that false negative ego, because the, the ego isn't, isn't inherently negative, but the negative ego is, that's fear. And when you jump into your fear mind in a given situation, you lose time. You ever notice how when you're afraid, time speeds up in a situation? But those of us that know that if you don't panic, 
time will actually extend for you and give you that split second you need to make a decision. Only those of us that have been through that can attest to that. If you've never been through that, I can't, there's no way I can accurately describe it to you. I can only say that you get an extra split second if you don't panic. To think about, okay, boom, what am I going to do? The minute you panic, you're done for. You are trapped into whatever possibility that fear has opened up for you. And I have felt the transition before. Because there have been situations where I panicked first. And then thought about it and was like, oh, I know how to fix this. And boom! Instantly grabbed an extra couple of seconds to say, okay, if I do this, 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 woo, problem averted. And I'll even, I'll give you a for instance. It's the middle of winter. I'm driving, I got a four-wheel drive truck. And then I'm not going to lie, in my four-wheel drive truck, I feel safer. So I drive a little bit faster than conditions would normally allow. I don't have that four-wheel drive truck anymore. This was years ago. This was 15 years ago, 15 or 16 years ago. So I don't have that vehicle anymore. But when I did, oh, buddy, from the first snow until the last plow pushed the last bit of snow off the road, I kept my hubs locked because I had those old worn hand manual, lock hub, manual locking hubs and then shift on the fly four-wheel drive, which meant I could lock it into four-wheel low or no, four-wheel high whenever I want it. So from the first snow to the last plow, I had my hubs locked. Well, it was snowing out. There was about inch, maybe two inches of snow on the ground. I had that bad boy locked in, and I'm chucking along at the speed limit. Speed limit's 50 on the back roads. These aren't main roads. This was in Traverse City, Michigan. I think I was coming down, I think it was Five Mile Road from Hammond. And only people that lived in Michigan will know the references. But I was coming down Five Mile Road from Hammond, and it's it's a hill with a lot of twisty curves, a lot of blind curves. Well, I'm chucking it down this hill because I have four wheel drive, and I come around this blind curve, and there was a head on collision in the middle of the road. Instantly panicked, and the media, the immediate panic response when you're driving a car is what? That's right. I slammed on the brakes instantly start sliding straight for this accident. This accident had almost, I'm going to say at least a dozen people were standing around this wreck in the middle of the road. I would have killed at least two or three of them if I would have hit it. As soon as I start sliding, it occurred to me, I know how to fix this, and I stopped panicking, and boom! Time, I, sh I, I shit you not, and those that have been through this can attest to you. Time either slowed or stopped and I had the time to think about everything I was going to do, come up with a new route, everything. What did I do? I'm in an automatic, not a stick. So I take the shifter, I drop it down in the second gear and get off. Actually, I get off the brakes but the wheels are still sliding because that's the motion they're in. Drop it down in second, transmission catches the wheels, wheels start Turning again, now I have control of the vehicle again. I'm still in four-wheel drive. I notice that there's enough room on the shoulder to drop down into this ditch and come up around on the other side of this accident, and that's exactly what I did. Poop down into the ditch, poop up on the road, stopped, and then I let, as soon as that moment was over, it all comes back in. Oh, holy shit. But in that moment, when I figured out, I know how to do this, I grabbed it, got around it, and it was all good until I released that moment and then boom, whew, all that panic and that fear came right back and I turned around and all those people were watching me. And I was like, holy shit, I would have killed at least two or three of those people had I maintained that sense of panic. That fear response, the tiny, ooh, right? <laughs> the tiny mind, the left brain negative ego response and that's not the only instance that's just one of the my favorite okay 
what I did after that was I went, I turned my truck around, went back up the road and asked if anybody had any objections to me pushing this wreck off the road. And no, nobody, everyone said no. So I pushed the car because there was only one car left in the road. The other one had spun off the road and the other one was sitting right in the middle of the road. And people were still coming around the corner up to this blind, this blind curve and then having to slam in their brakes around the corner. And it's still snowing out. It's going to happen again. And eventually somebody's going to get hurt. So I, in four-wheel drive, I went ahead and pushed the wreck off the side of the road. And now the road was clear and people could get through. It was no longer a danger. I mean, if you got to sit out in the, in the middle of the road talking, at least send someone up around the curve to slow people down because there's a wreck around the blind curve. <laughs> Which is off the subject, but yeah, that's what they should have done. <laughs> but yeah, I've I have got numerous stories like that where not panicking led to having a split second more to think about something, or even a, I mean, when you're in it, it feels like you get minutes, five, ten extra, well, not that much, but upwards of five minutes extra to think about things to perform the actions you see fit to perform. And only people that have been through it can attest to it. If you've never experienced it, you're going to think I'm full of shit. Those movies where you see that so-and-so's just doing their thing and then all of a sudden they're put in a position where they have to concentrate really hard and time slows down and they can perform whatever action, that is exactly how it happens. That is exactly how it happens. And only people that have been through it can attest to that. I'm not saying that you're less of a person if you haven't experienced that. What I'm saying is, if you've never experienced that, you're more prone to a fear response. Because the only way to kill that and make time speed up, because having a fear response has the opposite effect. Time speeds up and you, <laughs> you reach the final outcome and it seems like it happens quicker. Whereas when you have, when you don't have a fear response or you can catch yourself and pull yourself out of that fear response, you have a few extra seconds as opposed to losing seconds. And yeah, fear. <laughs> I don't know any other way to explain it other than to say that it is the it is the negative ego. It is the tiny mind at work. You're working with the fewest possibilities available to you and the worst case scenarios that could possibly come out of the situation. My advice to anyone watching this video is do not lean towards fear in any situation. If you can pull yourself out of it, pull yourself out of it. Because you can buy yourself, not only can you buy yourself more time, you have you can think more clearly. You're not clouded by self-preservation or the feeling that it's futile to, to resist the outcome. That's a fear. And fear isn't something you need. Are we all going to die eventually? Yeah, probably. So there's no point in fearing that. There's no point in fearing the, any given situation. Can you break your leg if you do this particular thing or break any part of your body doing a particular thing? Probably. But if you knew how easy it was to get hurt, injured, or die just on a daily basis walking to the store, you'd never leave your house again. So what's the point of going in, in that direction? In a universe of infinite possibility, Try to draw down wings. Don't try and draw down your own death. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. We're getting on past the 30 minute mark. And I really, really like this video. I mean, the time went by so fast, it feels like I just started talking five minutes ago. But yeah, I could probably keep going for a whole hour, but 
I, I'm afraid I'd probably lose most of you after the first 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's blathering on again. Click. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can also favorite this video if you would like. But if you would like to keep coming back and getting this information, or you just like the sound of my voice, <laughs> then please click the subscribe button because I, I try to have decent content. You have to remember this is based on my life experience. And not all of my experiences were like story worthy and tell somebody. Sometimes it's boring, but the lesson involved is important. So, yeah. Until next time, you hang in there.